there are 13 companies publicly manufacturing and designing GPUs. For those that sell their chips to add-in board partners, or AIBs for short, like AMD and Nvidia, they use up to 29 companies. Nvidia and AMD are likely the two options you've probably heard of when it comes to discrete or add-in graphics cards, as they are the most popular in that category. So you can understand the current state of the GPU market. I think it's good to take a quick look at how GPUs sort of came to be. GPU type chips were first sort of born in the 1970s to help accelerate arcade games like Space Invaders. So are you guys saying that uh, gaming provides nothing for the old? Where would your medical research be without gaming, huh? Anyway, the um, point is that uh, these chips use fixed function units which are basically specific bits of hardware that are designed to do one task and one task only. This is relatively inefficient as it means if you're not doing that specific operation at that specific point in time, that part of the chip would be sat idle and effectively wasting time, heat and power and all that sort of stuff. ATI, one of the big names in graphics cards, was actually founded eight years before NVIDIA in 1985. They were acquired by AMD in 2006 for a whopping $5.4 billion, especially in the early days, ATI made some very interesting cards, including what they called the All-in-Wonder, which used their Rage graphics engine, as well as a built-in TV tuner, so you could accelerate your 3D graphics, as well as uh, watch TV on your PC. ATI also made the graphics chips for the GameCube, the Wii, and the Xbox 360, and after AMD acquired them, they obviously made the PS uh, PlayStation 4 lineups, including the Pro, as well as the Xbox One and the Wii U. Nvidia started in 1993 with their NV1 design, although the real magic happened in 1999 with our NV10 launch. This was remarkable as they used programmable shaders and hardware translation and lighting, which means that you're actually doing a lot of the computation on the card and you didn't have to rely on those fixed function units, which made the card a lot more efficient and meant that you could do a lot more operations per second. And doing the transformation and lighting on the card as well was a lot faster than doing it on the CPU, which is how it was done previously. Nvidia has been the market leader for years now, although until 2014, they stuck around generally 60, 40 share with obviously Nvidia holding the 60%. As of 2014, the share difference grew massively, with AMD only just regaining some share to now be at 30% to Nvidia 70. The worst area for AMD was Q2 of 2015, where Nvidia had 82%, almost as high as Intel's 87.7% share in the CPU area. Speaking of Intel, they currently include GPUs on their CPUs. It's called the iGPU, or Integrated GPU, and even their Iris Pro lineup still isn't that powerful, and unless it's desperately necessary, I wouldn't really recommend gaming on it. They're still perfectly useful for general app, you know, web applications, office-type use, HTPC use if you really want to, but it's not a massive uh, gaming chip, I would say. Interestingly, in 2011, Intel agreed to pay Nvidia $1.5 billion over five years for access to their graphics technology. Since that deal elapsed in 2016, there have been rumors circulating that Intel will be paying AMD for access to their graphics technology, which would be a very interesting thing to see, although it's definitely still a rumor mill at this point. So until we see some actual confirmed legal documents and announcements from Intel and AMD, uh, I just resign this one to potential. I focus a lot on the desktop GPU side as that's my area of expertise, but I don't think I could properly talk about the full state of the GPU markets without at least covering mobile slightly. Qualcomm is one of the most popular CPU and GPU manufacturers, especially when it comes to ARM-based mobile products. Their Adreno GPUs are in almost every Android phone, including even some Samsung phones when Samsung can't get their own Exynos chips in there. Interestingly, the Adreno chips are actually designed by ACI and were bought from AMD after the merger in 2009, and obviously Qualcomm have been using them ever since. These can be found used in tandem with the Snapdragon processors that are seen in most Android phones. The best Adreno GPUs GPU at the moment is the 530, which can run up to 650 megahertz, uses a 14 nanometer process, and has up to 520 gigaflops of compute power. To give you context, an AMD RX 480 has 5.8 teraflops, so in theory, the Adreno GPU is about 10 times less powerful. On the desktop side, we're coming to an interesting point. Nvidia only has one card left to show in this generation, the 1080 Ti. The Ti version of their 80 cards is always fairly interesting, because it normally sits fairly close in terms of performance to whatever generation generation Titan we're on, but at a relatively reduced price. It also helps reduce the price of all the other GPUs under it, and makes for a, a rather interesting experience for the buyer. AMD has a very interesting card, or in theory card, to play here, which is their entire Vega lineup. They've announced that it will be available sometime likely in quarter two of 2017, likely after their Ryzen CPU launch, and it's going to be very interesting to see. They've released fairly little information, although they have released a bit on the architecture of how it works. The biggest thing I've seen from this is the use of high bandwidth memory or HBM2 for these cards. It's a very 
interesting thing is it's using the uh, HBM2 instead of normal VRAM like we see on pretty much every graphics card. Even the Fury X lineup which uses the first generation HBM memory, this is being used as a high bandwidth cache. The reason this is really interesting is because in theory it can use up to 512 terabytes of virtual address space which is mostly going to be used from your hard drive. It can also pull from the uh, system RAM as well as non-volatile RAM or NVRAM, which again makes it a very interesting thing. This is a technology that we're likely not going to see you know, great gaming improvements straight away. It's likely going to be a few years down the road before we see any actual performance improvements from this, but it's a very interesting technology to see. We're in a relatively fragile place at the moment, at least with the desktop side, where if the Vega architecture doesn't necessarily work out as well as we want it to, we're leaning way more into sort of NVIDIA heavy monopoly which as we've seen especially with stuff like the 970 lawsuit recently it's just not a very great place to be in. The best solution for this is just to be sensible when you're buying stuff. Of course you guys who are watching this video are likely already that sort of people but the sort of people who just buy you know something because oh it's this brand that's kind of where the trouble lies and unfortunately NVIDIA does really just hold the mind share as they call it so it is quite difficult for even people like AMD who are an established brand to break into the existing market that they're already in and actually get their sales back up and market share back up to a reasonable sort of competitive level. On the mobile front I'm afraid to say I'm not that knowledgeable on it so if you have any more information please do leave it in the comments down below as I love to fully understand the topic more. If you're interested Imagine Technologies Power VR is what Apple uses to well power their graphics experiences on their devices. And the Adreno and Exynos chips are getting better by the year, which in theory is bringing us closer to the vision of having a phone that you can dock into your TV or your HTPC stand or your office station and have one device to sort of suit all of that. So that's about it. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, and especially if you felt you learned something, please consider subscribing and sharing the video on Reddit or tech forums or just with someone you know. If you learned something new, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And of course, have I got anything wrong or you just know anything else regarding anything I spoke about in the video please do let me know in the comments down below I'd love to have a better understanding of all of this so as I said let me know in the comments let me know what you thought of the video and of course if you want to support me more support the channel and all that sort of stuff then when you're buying on Amazon or on Overclockers UK if you use the affiliate links in the description down below it does help me out it does support me and it does keep these videos coming so thanks for watching that's pretty much it we'll see you on Friday for the next video